from GCU Stadium on the campus of Grand Canyon University. This is NCAA softball. Today, the Lopes meet the Trailblazers from Dixie State University. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to Phoenix. I'm Tim Wilhelm, along with Braid and Dorman. We are happy to have you with us. It's the final home series of the season, and the Lopes are looking to keep their role going. It's a doubleheader this afternoon and this evening, so make yourself comfortable and see what happens. GCU comes in 33 and 10, pursuing the school's all-time wins record. And for good measure, the Lopes are running away with the Western Division of the WAC with a mark of 16 and 2. Now Dixie State is 16 and 28 overall, 6 and 12 in the conference, looking for some kind of magic to click in before the conference tournament in two weeks. Visitors have been announced. They are on the foul lines and the Lopes being identified person by person and it will be underway shortly. There was a ceremony before the game. We'll show you a little video of it a little bit later of head coach Shannon Hayes being presented an award for his achievement last weekend. More about that later. Lots to talk about tonight. It's 91 degrees right now at game time. It's just the slightest of breeze a little bit, maybe six or seven miles per hour. It's a non-impact item at this point. There was no wind moments ago. Now we have some. So, you know, if you don't like it, just wait a minute. It'll change for you. Braden Dorman, a big weekend at hand for the Lopes. Absolutely. I mean, this is, as you mentioned, the final home stand for this Lopes team before they go to California Baptist next weekend. And then the weekend after, things get real. And the, the WAC tournament uh, at Sam Houston State University, and it's really gonna be about winning. So why not get on that Hearts hot streak, and, or in the Lopes case, stay on their hot streak as they're coming into this one with two sweeps in a row. Boy, I don't know a coach in a sport of any kind, really, that, that would say anything to the contrary with respect to getting on a roll. It's something that every team really wants is to get hot at the right time. And what that means with a week to go this weekend and one more, it's time to get hot. Forget about what you've done, it's time to get hot right now. Let's take a moment and pause to enjoy our national anthem honor America with the playing of our national anthem. GCU and Dixie State getting ready to go. And for the keys to the game, here's Braden. Well, the first key to the game for today is liven up campus. I mean, you can see kind of in the background, not much movement. As <laughs> it's the, quiet. The students are gone, <laughs> and I mean, this campus is fairly dead. So why not get things going early with an aggressive at the plate and aggressive on the base paths? Next is senior weekend as we actually see two seniors throwing it out right now. Ryan Denhart and Gianna Nicoletti, their fathers, 
are going to throw them the ceremonial first pitch. So we'll take a quick pause. Todd Denhart Go ahead, and John Nicoletti. Yeah, well, both of them got it there. That's awesome. Love to see it. That's just two of the five seniors that will be honored throughout this weekend series. So very cool to see. But you know, with these seniors playing their final three games at GCU Softball Stadium, they're going to look to finish strong with a great series here. And finally, get one. One win for this Lopes team will, in fact, clinch the outright Western Athletic Conference West Division title. So the Lopes just needing the one more. So what better game to get it than right here in this first one of the doubleheader today? The Lopes take the field, and we'll set them defensively in a moment. But first, let's take a look at the starting batting order. Absolutely. The starting batting order for the Dixie State Trailblazers. Carly El Eldridge at second base will lead off. Casey Crawford and Hannah Hubanks will be at 2-3. Clements, Lockard, and Campbell at 4-5-6. Oakley Trapp, Lauren Almeida, and Madison Durier will be at 7-8-9. and nine. Randy Simpkins in his 13th year. You can see that, head coach. He will be positioned in the third base coach's box when his team is on offense, which will be momentarily. Mike Garut is the first base coach for the Trailblazers. The Lopes defensively, Ariel Thompson in the circle, Kinsey Kelso behind the plate. There's nothing new under the sun here with respect to the Lopes defensive alignment. It's the same. Danae Chapman at first, Macy Barnes at second, Caitlin Dunkel is the shortstop, Savannah Torville at third base, Gianna Nicoletti in left, Steph Reed in center, and Kristen Fifield in right field. And Braden Boy, Ariel Thompson has had a pretty nice year. She sure has, and we've talked about this one-two punch the Lopes have brought all year in the circle. Ariel Thompson, J.C. Hambrick. Well, today Thompson will take game one. We'll probably see Hamrick game two, but Thompson coming into today with a 2-5-7 ERA through 26 appearances. This will be his her 23rd start. She's had 14 complete games, and I mean her stats have just been quite off the charts. 105 strikeouts to 28 walks. She'll pile in the strike zone, and she's going to go right at this Trailblazers lineup today. Thompson with an earned run average, as you mentioned, of 2.57. She was on her way before last Saturday of pursuing the single season uh, ERA mark. On track to ranking among the all-time lopes for lowest ERA. You need two seasons to do that. So we'll kind of follow along with her numbers throughout the weekend. She'll pitch today and probably a little bit again tomorrow if things hold to form. Eldridge, one and one on the count. Lefty against the righty, outside for a ball, two and one. Eldridge batting 381. That is the highest batting average in the Dixie starting lineup. 45 base hits, fouled off. Two balls and two strikes. Thompson in 128 innings. 105 strikeouts. So not what you would classify as an overwhelming strikeout pitcher, but she gets them in bunches. Here comes the 2-2. Bounced foul at the plate. Ariel sure does get them in bunches. Definitely uses momentum to her advantage, but when she's not striking them out, she's usually providing weak contact, getting plenty of ground balls for this awesome infield led by Caitlin Dunkel and Macy Barnes up the middle. Boy, they've been good, haven't they? Fouled right back at us. Count stays level, two and two. Eldridge, Crawford, Hubanks. If anybody gets aboard, Clements for the Blazers. 16 and 28, six and 12. Looking to get something going. Bounce the third foul. So pecking away at the plate is Eldridge. 
Boy, Braden, you're right. It is quiet. I'm listening to the ambient sound outside, and, well, you know, school's out, in the words of Alice Cooper. My goodness, it's quiet. Strikeout in the books. Eldridge down, swinging. Last weekend, it was a crazy beehive of activity. We had graduations going on all weekend and during the week, for that matter. Ball not, one to Crawford. Not to mention all of the students moving out during the games. Made it pretty crazy campus. So, yeah, quite the opposite this weekend. Well, it was very entertaining last week from our vantage point here. Ball two, two and zero to Crawford, batting 336, 40 base hits. Five home runs. Dixie State will hit some long ball. They have 36 home runs on the season. Compared to the Lopes with 45. Last weekend was the home run derby prospectus, and we saw some. The wind was really blowing out, but not so far this weekend. But look at the forecast. It's supposed to be beautiful all weekend long. Two and two with that changeup from Thompson. That has been a very effective pitch. Pitch is swung on up in the zone. Just got a tip. And the count remains level two and two. Last weekend, we sat here and watched an unending stream of traffic ranging from beyond the cage in foul territory on the third base side all the way to beyond right field, out to the road, around the corner. People loading up to Vamoose to get off campus. And you pull into the garage today, and there's, where is everybody? Well, school's out. 3-2 pitch, popped up, first base side. Danae Chapman makes the catch. Chapman, you note, wearing sunglasses, as does Macy Barnes and Kristen Fifield in right field. Those are the... Folks that need them the most. In fact, first base umpire Dale Wilson is wearing the shades as well. Home plate umpire in this one is Matthew Jacks. Jerry Carter umpiring over at third base. Two out, nobody on to Hannah Hubanks, the first baseman. Hubanks batting 364. Ball one and then ball two. We were talking about Thompson before last Saturday. She had a rough outing. Had a terrific start on Friday. Saturday, not so much. Gave up three in the first, three in the second, and was lifted. And ERA took a bite right there, falling behind 3-0. and oh. Thompson has walked 28 in 128 innings. Really not that much. She started these first couple of batters off today with getting behind in the count. She fought back the first two batters, but four pitch walk here. She'll look to lock it back in. She's gonna face Clements who leads this team in a lot of statistical categories from the plate. Shea Clements batting 356 indeed leader in hits with 47. Runs batted in with 33, home runs with nine. Strike one. But Thompson, before the ERA got took a little bump up, the, the record in the Lopes all-time marks for lowest ERA for a career is 2.46. Thompson right now is 2.57. But she's as we right say, yeah, she's right there. But she ma made a jump, though, last week. Mm -hmm. She was well below it. Ground ball up the middle, speared by Caitlin Dunkel, and just gets up and taps the bag for out number three. Nice diving stop and 
the side is retired. Top of the first, nothing for the Blazers. The Lopes coming to bat. Stay with us. GCU softball. On Collins the inbounds the ball to Clifton. Clifton finds Winter under the basket. Kick it up to Kimberly for a long three. Shazam! And you can put this one in the icebox. Sanderson Ford has just won another championship. Congratulations to Sanderson Ford. This all-star team consistently wins by treating customers the right way. No hassles, no pressure, no nonsense, no added markups. While new vehicle inventory is on the rebound, we have hundreds of pre-owned vehicles starting under 12 grand. For a true championship experience, see my friends at Sanderson Ford. Four. Sunrise, waking up lonely, big sky, where am I going? I don't know, I don't know. You take me for what I am, love pure and simple. In this wild life, I've been living in a million pieces. You are the best part. In this wild life, I've been living in a million pieces. We're your neighbors, and we're sports fans, huge fans. So come on over. It's game time. There's plenty of food and everything else we know you love. You choose your favorite games to watch and hear. We're your home for sports, Arizona. So join us today at CAZ Sports Bar at Casino Arizona. Gianna Nicoletti checks in for the Lopes, and we are going to get underway offensively right now. Well, the GCU batting order today. Nicoletti, Dunkel, that's, that's normal. Fifield moves up to the three spot. Chapman, Kelso at four and five. Stephanie Reed now in the six hole. Burnett, Tourville, and Barnes, seven, eight, nine. No balls and one strike to Gianna. The catalyst, certainly. Boy, it's going to be a different look if you consider. What would this lineup be like without Gianna Nicoletti? 58 hits, tops on the team. 52 runs, tops on the team. There's a strike, one and two. Not to mention she's one of the best in the nation at stealing bags. Well, you know, we have a lot to talk about in that regard, and we'll wait until she gets on, which we expect will happen because her on-base percentage is pretty much, well, 50% of the time she's on base. 1-2. Chipped foul. 22 walks contribute to that. That's a lot of base running opportunities for Gianna. The first time you see her play, you think, okay, there's a ground ball to short, and then you look at first, and she's across the bag already. There's a ground ball to third. Throw to first is just in time. She gets down the line so quickly. And teams know they have to just grab and throw, and third baseman, Laura Lockhart, Nearly threw it away at first base. Well, today's pitcher is a familiar name, at least Tyler Denhart, younger sister of Ryan, uh, pitcher for the Antelopes. She's had a pretty good season. She's been the ace for this Dixie State Trailblazers team. Hit to center field and fading is Casey Crawford to make the catch. Two up and two down against Tyler Denhart. The right and here's Kristen Fifield. So Nicoletti and Dunkel, the two 400-plus batters for the Lopes, have been dispatched here in the bottom half of the first inning. So here's Kristen Fifield at 349. What a year she has had. If you look at the power statistics for the Lopes, I would say if you, you would stand back and look at it that the power department was pretty much dominated by Chapman in the first half of the season, and maybe you'd have to say it was Fifield in the second half of the season. And you look up, and Kristen now with 13 home runs, 46 runs batted in. 
Chapman next, 12 home runs, 46 runs batted in. Dunkel with 46 runs batted in. You know, you go through those three, you feel like you've done something. Sure have. It's very tough to get through this lineup, especially in the first inning. They tend to strike early and often. Tyler working around them thus far. That'd be pretty fun for the Denhart family to not only be able to celebrate Ryan and the senior weekend for her, but also against her sister. Wide to left, it's gonna bounce. Short hop by Durye, and it's a two out single to left field, opposite field hit for five field. Runner aboard for Chapman. And that doesn't happen too often. Five field, very pull heavy. She's, you know, very capable of pulling it deep into right field. That time goes the other way with it. That's a good sign of a good hitter. Be able to spray it all across this field. Nice two out base hit. The Lopes looking to win their fourth game in a row against Dixie State. Strike call on the outside edge. GCU swept the series in St. George by scores of 3 to 2, 12 to 3, and 10 to 2. So the first one, a tough one. The others, not so much. Pitch a little bit high. One and one, the count. Dixie State opened with a very tough schedule this season. Kind of got them off to a bad start. Five tough ones at Fullerton in a tournament. Lost them all, but the opposition was pretty heavy. Fullerton, host school, San Diego, Colorado State, Cal, and Ole Miss. It's a pretty good lineup opening weekend. Three and one to Chapman with five field at first base, two out. Bottom half of inning number one on deck, Kelso. The Blazers played five low scoring games at the UC Davis tournament. There's a strike, the throw to second base is not in time. Sliding in safely is five field. Stolen base. For Kristen. Second baseman Eldridge got over there. Maybe a little later than she wanted to in front of the bag. Maybe if she was a little further back and had made a good play on it, maybe gotten that down, but five field still a great jump. Now in field in scoring position for Danae. Five field seven for seven and steals, but it doesn't matter as Chapman goes down swinging for the third out. So the Lopes leave one. They get one hit, and that's it. At the end of one, no score. Stay with us. Lope Softball on ESPN+. Plus. I love my new home, but it might be too Victorian. Oh, gosh, interesting hemline on this. PTI, I need the P-D-F-C-O-B-A-K-A-E-O-D. What's the E-T-A? A-S-A-P. I love my new home, but it might be too Victorian. Oh, gosh, interesting hemline on this. Meet Renee, bank manager and mother. But when she gets on her bike, she becomes... I love my new home, but it might be too Victorian. Oh gosh, interesting hemline on this. Go, because she'd never rebel against great service. Geico, savings and service for both your sides. Pardon me, Your Grace. Oh, just call me Grace. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. At Metro by T-Mobile, you can upgrade your adventure because we're giving you more choices with the largest selection of free 5G phones from brands you love, like Samsung. Switch now and save more. Only at Metro. When you have auto glass damage, trust SafeLight. This dad and daughter were driving when they got a crack in their windshield. It's okay, we'll pull over. He wouldn't take his car just anywhere, so he brought it to SafeLight. We replaced the windshield and recalibrated their car's advanced safety system. So features like automatic emergency braking will work properly. All right, all finished. Wow, that's great, thanks. Stay safe with SafeLight. Schedule now. 
Safe Flight Repair, Safe Flight Replace. Top of the second inning, no score. GCU and Dixie State. The Lopes have had a wonderful season, and they've pretty much made it clear that they are the cream of the crop in the standings of the WAC West. First pitch lined to right by Laura Lockhart. Leadoff single, the first hit of the game for Dixie State. But if you look at the standings, the Lopes are way ahead of anybody else in the standings and will be going on throughout the weekend with the prospect of needing just one victory to officially clinch, if you will. Well, we had it. There it is. You can see GCU with a six-game lead over Seattle. Yeah. Well, you do the math, six games to go. All you got to do is win one, and you got the outright West Division Championship. However, they just have a one-game lead on Stephen F. Austin in the Southwest. And that number one seed in the WAC tournament is still up for grabs. So no reason to be complacent if you do get that one. As we mentioned at the top, it's got to get hot at the right time if you want to win in the postseason. So that's still going to be key for this Lopes team. Rachel Campbell, the catcher, batting. And the count is level two and two to Campbell. Batting 278, seven home runs. Second on the team is Campbell in that long ball department. She strikes out on a pitch away. Second strikeout in the early going for junior Ariel Thompson. One down here is Oakley Trapp. She's the designated player for the Blazers. Trapp batting 240, 25 hits in 104 at-bats, nine bases. Extra base hits, ground ball to Torval. She goes to second for one, throw to first, not nearly in time, but the lead runner is retired, 5-4. Trap aboard on the fielder's choice, two out, and we'll go to Lauren Almeida in the eight hole. The play by Torval, it seemed like she may have bobbled it initially, but sticks with it, gets the lead out. Barnes fires it across to first just in case. Would have been very, very tough to double that one up. Almeida at 350. A solid hitter in the eighth spot for Randy Simpkins. I have a batter in the eighth spot that has four homers, 25 runs batted in, eight doubles. 41 hits, only six off the team lead in that department. Wax it past Torval into left field. Advancing to second base is Trap. Second hit of the inning. Brings up Madison Duryea. In the ninth spot. Duryea, a lot less work. Just 38 at bats, 10 for 38. 263. Does not have a home run. Pitch is inside. We were talking about. Dixie having some low scoring tournaments, low scoring games, and they played five in the UC Davis tournament earlier in the season and scored just 12 runs in the five games. They only gave up 24, which is not terrible. But when you only score 12 in five games, it's hard to win, and consequently, they lost four of five. And also, you know, you look at the five at Fullerton against the tough opponents. And it adds up to 
being upside down in the win-loss department. Nonetheless, I mean, you look up and down that order. I mean, they've all had pretty good s seasons when you're looking at their batting average. Yes, they have. So Swing and a miss. Quite interesting. Strike three, second strikeout of the inning, third of the game for Thompson. Nothing on the board for either team after one and a half. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We love our new apartment. There's too much pressure in the bathroom. Good luck with the future in-laws tonight. Don't overthink it. But don't underthink it. At least Geico makes bundling our renters and car insurance easy. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, boy. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. Getting the incredible iPhone 13 without T-Mobile makes as much sense as playing hide-and-seek. Ready or not, here I come! In the desert. <sighs> really, guys? T-Mobile has more 5G bars in more places. And now, when you switch, you can get iPhone 13 on us. And one year of Apple TV Plus for free. You're not going to fit in that hole. Don't look any further. Unlock the full power of iPhone 13 on us at T-Mobile. Check out this verbo. Come on. No, I do. No, you're here. No, you can't go on because I am right where I belong. It's lawn season. Now I need a lawn. Quick. Fast way to bring it up to speed, Scott's Turf Builder Rapid Grass. Rapid Grass is a revolutionary mix of seed and fertilizer that will change the way you grow grass. It grows two times faster than seed alone for full green grass in just weeks. After growing grass this fast, everything else just seems slow. It's lawn season. Let's get to the yard. Download the Scott's My Lawn app today for your personalized lawn plan. Bottom half of the second inning. And leading it off, Kenzie Kelso in the five spot, Steph Reed next, and then Hannah Burnett. Ball one to Kelso. Kenzie, 353. Seven home runs, 25 runs batted in. Hit into right center field, racing over, racing over, not going to get it. Planted off the hall. The wall is Clements, the throw to second base, not in time. And Kinsey Kelso has a leadoff double. Opposite field. Short hop the fence. Two bagger for Kelso. Well, we mentioned how Fifield really turned things around in the second half of the season. Kinsey Kelso's right there with her. She's gotten hot in the Western Athletic Conference play. She keeps it going with a nice two-bagger to start the second inning. Kelso now with 12 doubles on the season. She takes the lead in that department among all Lopes players. Ball is whacked to left, fading is Duryea. She catches it on the edge of the track. Good first step by Duryea. Solidly struck ball off the bat of Steph Reed, but it's a just allowed out. One gone, and here's Hannah Burnett. That was allowed out off the bat. It really did seem like she had barreled it up, and it might have a chance to get out of here. But that ball is caught just in front of the warning track. Brown number one. Hannah Burnett from the left side, 369. Time has called, quick conversation in the circle. Yeah, a number of Lopes, Braden, you talk about the conference, and how they've warmed up. Well, hey, they're 16 and two in conference, so right. you figure you've got to be doing it with something, right? And you look and you see Kelso, 426, Nicoletti, 460, Fifield, 411, Dunkel, 400. You know, Burnett is at 364, and she's sixth yeah. in that pecking order. 
Chapman, 383. And one of the two batters in this lineup tend to slap it to the left side. Now, it'll be interesting to see how Kelso reacts if there is a grounder to the left here. Warren Lockhart in at third base. Pitch is outside, two and one. Tyler Denhart, 4.72 ERA. 80 innings pitched, 61 Ks. 25 walks, none yet. The pitch is outside, ball three. Grand Canyon is hot. They've won 16 of 18 since the WAC opener. Three one pitch slice down the line. It's foul. Come back and do it again. Diving effort by Duryea to no avail. Three and two to Hannah Burnett. And the two losses in that stretch since the start of conference. Lopes lost the opener at New Mexico State. And 16 and one in league since. They also had a non-league game. They lost one league game. It was a Utah Valley a game they lost in the seventh inning. Had the game won, got away from them. And the only other loss was to Oregon State, ranked 33 in extra innings. So the Lopes haven't really been threatened on a regular basis. They're, they're threatened occasionally. They've had a couple of come from behind wins. Just a lot of fight and belief in this team. We've seen them, as you mentioned, just a second ago, that they're having a couple comeback victories. But I mean, there's really just not much doubt that they're gonna figure it out, that they're gonna get the hits or the runs that they need to in whack play this year. Strike. Well, that kind of mindset is a plus, and it's also a little scary sometimes for a head coach because if you know you're going to come back and win, if you think you are, it's you, you kind of get lulled into a don't worry, we got this mm -hmm. thing. And sometimes you don't got this. You got to play hard and run through the tape, as they say. And that's the challenge sometimes if you're a coach on a team that's winning a lot. It's continuing to improve. The wins and losses take care of themselves, but you got to get better. Postseason looms, and everything gets tougher in another week. 0-2, the count to Sorville. And Torval swings and misses. Strike three through so Savannah is retired on the second strikeout of the game for Tyler Denhart. Well, the elevated fastball gets her. Denhart's go to two strikes. See if Macy Barnes can pick her up. Kelso at second base, Burnett at first. Good base runners both. The pitch, ball one. After this weekend, just three games left on the schedule. Regular season, that is. The Lopes are right now are 33 and 10. The GCU record for Division I wins is 36. Fly ball to right. Clements is there, and she almost had that thing blow by her as the breeze had picked up a little. But she reached up, it looked like the Statue of Liberty making the grab to retire the side. Scoreless through two, we'll be right back. Meet Renee, bank manager and mother. 
But when she gets on her bike, she becomes Rebel Renee. Rebel Renee isn't about greasing some palms to get things done. And she rides with Geico because she'd never rebel against great service. Geico, savings and service for both your sides. At Metro by T-Mobile, you can upgrade to 5G and save more with one line of unlimited 5G for just 40 bucks, period. That's the lowest price in prepaid. Switch now and take your movie night to new heights with 5G. Only at Metro. Scott's Turf Builder Triple Action kills weeds, prevents crabgrass, and feeds your lawn. All three in just one bag. As parents of triplets, I like that. Scott's Turf Builder Triple Action. It's lawn season. Let's get to the yard. At Ace, your backyard is right in our backyard. So when you need to feed your grass, remove the weeds, or wrangle those leaves, go to the best place that delivers on top brands like Ego, Toro, and Steel. No warehouse store can match the convenience of your locally owned neighborhood Ace. So stop on by. You can also order online for curbside pickup or get what you need delivered today. Around the block, what you need in stock with people who know their lawn care. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Check out this verbo. Come on. Now I'm here. Now you're here. Now you're here. And for all those I am right where I belong. Shannon Hayes was honored before the game with a presentation of a nice photo and set it on the easel at home plate. He's didn't want to make a big deal of it, so it was a a quickie. But what a first season he has had here on top of an already wonderful career. And as a result, 500 career wins achieved last weekend. Carly Eldridge, leadoff batter at the plate, 0 for 1, struck out in the first inning. Well, at every Quickly. level, Shannon Hayes, doesn't matter really what level, what sport, actually. I mean, he's got a lot of coaching experience. He just wins, and it's great to have him here on campus coaching this team and already what he's done, flip this pro program around to 33-10 and 10 record and counting. I think a lot more wins are going to be added to that resume in the future. Well, 501 cumulative he's won as you say at every level and every stop never had a losing season it was 187 and 96 at texas tech i mean you're playing in big 12 pretty good conference 33 and 10 here in his first season won a boatload of games at oklahoma christian at d2 it doesn't matter what level. NAIA, Division II, Division I. Pick them. What conference? Results have been the same. 219 and 106 in Division I. Playing against some tough folks. There's a base hit. Good at bat for Eldridge. Behind on the count, battled and gets a leadoff base hit. Runner aboard. The Blazers had the leadoff runner aboard in the second inning. Single from Lockhart. She got as far as second base, or rather Trapp did after forcing Lockhart. But it started a base running opportunity for Dixie State. They just couldn't get anybody home and left two runners in the second. Now the leadoff runner aboard in the third. Crawford popped to first base in the first inning. Lopes tight, both Chapman and Torville. That one was just a, maybe a little low. I think Thompson wanted that call. Keeping it low in the zone now. See if she can get a ground ball. Eldridge. Got to imagine the potential to steal, but not many people are against Kinsey. Kelso. Pop to left. Nicoletti is there to make the catch. 
One out for Hugh Banks. Ball one. Hugh Banks yet to see a strike. First at bat was four pitch walk. Thompson can find the zone against her. Ariel not as sharp as she has been in other starts to this point. She's been behind in the count and falls in arrears here. 2-0 and o is fouled off. Of course, the Blazers have some course knowledge, don't they? They faced Ariel twice in St. George earlier in the season. Thompson getting the win in the first game in St. George. Went the distance. It was an extra inning game. The Lopes won 3-2. to two. Allowed two runs on seven hits in that one. Two balls and two strikes. Seven different players had a single hit against Thompson. Ariel pitched the next day in a five-inning game at the Lopes wrapped up with a seven run fifth inning. It was three to two going to the fifth. The Lopes scored seven. To give them 10, eight run margin. Dixie failed to score and that was that. But lots of exposure to Thompson and her delivery ball is hit into center field for a base hit. Going to third base is Eldridge. First time a runner has been to third base today. And Hugh Banks pushes one to scoring position. Well, that off speed just hung up a little bit for Hugh Banks. She waited for it and sprayed it into right field. Two good at bats from Eldridge. And Hugh Banks is hitting. Now they've got first and third, one down with Shea Clements at the cleanup. Hit number four for the Blazers. And Thompson falls behind again, 1-0. Oh. In that five-inning game in St. George, seven hits, bunted foul, one and one. So seven hits in the eight-inning game, then seven hits in the five-inning game. 13 innings pitched against Dixie State and Thompson allowing 14 hits in those 13 innings pitched. So Dixie State, team batting average of 313, knocks the ball around a little bit. Inside two and one. And true to form, four more hits. We're just in the third. Still scoreless, however. Runners at the corners. Shea Clemens trying to pick somebody up. Bounced one to shortstop. Nice play by Dunkel to get a force out. Back in the first inning, there's an off-speed pitch a little high. Three and one. So Ariel Thompson digging herself into a bit of a hole. Columbus is going to be ready for a strike, and while there's an open bag, you don't want to put her on. Swing and a miss. Clements one for two in one game and one for three in another against Thompson. Runs the count full. Laura Lockhart on deck. So 
see if Eubanks is off and running. Nope. Which is inside corner. Strike three called. Well, Clements obviously didn't agree with that one, but whether it was a good frame job by Kelso or just did nick that inside corner, it was pretty far inside. Call goes in the favor of the Lopes. Second out of the inning, a big out, as the Blazers cannot get a run home with a productive out, so now two out. And Lockhart will try to make something happen. Looks like Thompson almost lost a shoe. One and oh, the count. Lockhart lined a single to right field in the second inning. Campbell next. In the inning, Eldridge a single. And Hubanks a single. They're on the bases. Two and O oh, and Thompson falls behind again. It just makes it really tough on any pitcher. It really does. We've seen Shannon Hayes make moves rather swiftly if he feels like the pitcher in the circle is just not having the best day or feeling the best up there. So we'll see what happens, but does get the off speed. Maybe that's what's just working for her right now. See if she can find some better locations for that fastball. 2-1 is way inside, almost hit her. Three balls and a strike. Outfield straight away. Slight breeze blowing out to right. Lovely afternoon. Very comfortable in the shade. Pitches inside, ball four. So the bases are loaded. Hugh Banks moves up to second base. Eldridge still at third. Lockhart aboard at first. Time is called, and Shannon Thompson to the center of the diamond for a conversation. Well, you go out and you say, what's working, what isn't? Let's try this. There's all kinds of things. People, fans are really curious about what goes on in conversations on the mound, in baseball, and in the circle. And sometimes coaches will tell you, well, I just go out there to, you know, break up the situation and change the pace, make the on-deck batter wait. Yeah, it's usually a lot more simple than people would imagine some coaches have actually gone out and told a joke oh yeah loosen up a pitcher talk about where do you want to eat after the game hey i saw your mom was here you know anything just to break it up there's ball one so campbell trying to get the blazers on the board Bases loaded, two out, top of the third inning. Thompson delivers a strike right down the pipe. Rachel Campbell, 278, seven home runs. Second on the team, 23 runs batted in. Third on the team. 1-1 one, one pitch, swing and a miss. Well, sometimes a coach will go out and say, what's working for you? Mm -hmm. I think it's been that changeup today for Ray, for Ariel. And I wouldn't be surprised if she goes to it here. Fouled back off the net. Boy, Hubanks, the runner at second base, was off and running. If that had been a take, she's a long ways from a bag. Fastball is high. Two balls and two strikes. Definitely taking a large secondary lead. Definitely putting her
putting herself in a good position if a base hit were to come to score. Campbell struck out swinging in the second and strikes out swinging in the third, leaving the bases loaded. So Ariel Thompson escapes in the top of the third inning. We are still scoreless, bottom of the third when we come back. This is GCU Softball on ESPN+. Plus. Everything you desire. You got what I'm looking for. You got everything that I want. My sugar and gold. Everything you hunger for. Take me to a higher place. Show me all your magic ways. Nothing you ever expected. Welcome to Thosh at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. <laughs> Collins inbounds the ball to Clifton. Clifton finds Winter under the basket. Kick it up to Kimberly for a long three. Shazam! And you can put this one in the icebox. Sanderson Ford has just won another championship. Congratulations to Sanderson Ford. This all-star team consistently wins by treating customers the right way. No hassles, no pressure, no nonsense, no added markups. While new vehicle inventory is on the rebound, we have hundreds of pre-owned vehicles starting under 12 grand. For a true championship experience, see my friends at Sanderson Ford. Bottom of the third inning, the Lopes. Last weekend, in the doubleheader on Friday, the Lopes started well, a little quiet. In both of those games against New Mexico State, turned out well. didn't score in game one of the series last week until the fourth inning. Two and oh is the count to Gianna Nicoletti. Gianna 0 for one grounded to third base in the first inning. Dunkel next and then five field. Infield tight. Of course it is. They know. Ground ball is short. Gunned to first base by Almeida. Leaving no room for any mystery there. One hopper. Almeida and Lockard both fired the balls over to first base on their ground outs from Nicoletti just because of that speed. But they had her positioned pretty well, at least these first two at-bats. Here's Dunkel, flied to center field in the first inning. Look back at the series in St. George. And the Lopes didn't hit a lot in game one. They had six hits, that's all. They did have a home run from Chapman and five other hits from five different players. Now it's foul. One and one. Game two... Different story, GCU broke out the heavy lumber, if you will. Burnett had a three-hit game, five field, four hits. Kelso, three. Five different lopes had multi-hits in that one. And a 10-hit game on game three popped up on the infield, and making the catch is Carly Eldridge, quickly two out. So Denhardt doing what you should do, or you, what you want to do. Everybody tries to do it, but she has succeeded in keeping the top of the order off the bases, and that's where a lot of the goodness comes from in the GCU offense. Nicoletti 0 for 2, Dunkel 0 for 2. And here's five field. Kristen, a two-out single the other way to, to left field in the first inning. 
takes away. We have so many occasions during a season where we don't have comparative statistics. You might have one three-game series against a team. And, of course, early in the year, you only play a team a single time. Popped up foul behind the plate. Will it get out? Yes, it will. That one just barely got out. So you don't have stats to look at from previous games against, which are really the relative numbers. It's hard to tell from series to series. It's a different team, different players, pitches outside. But in the case of Dixie State, as was the case with New Mexico State, last weekend the Hopes have already played three against those schools, and by tomorrow they will have played five so you have a pretty good line on what you're dealing with. 2-1 pitch coming up. Off-speed strike. Beauty. 2-2. Two and two. Kelso had a big series against Dixie State. Four hits in the doubleheader. Two more in the single game. Elevated Among fastball others. again. Side retired. No hitting that inning. Five in a row retired by Tyler Denhart. Three in the books. Scoreless. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Lucky for me, there's some great golf here in the Carolinas. Whether you golf or not, Geico could help you score some great savings on car insurance. Whoa. Oh, hole in one. Geico. See all the ways you could save. Getting the incredible iPhone 13 without T-Mobile makes as much sense as playing hide-and-seek. Ready or not, here I come! In the desert. <sighs> really, guys? T-Mobile has more 5G bars in more places. And now, when you switch, you can get iPhone 13 on us. And one year of Apple TV Plus for free. You're not going to fit in that hole. Don't look any further. Unlock the full power of iPhone 13 on us at T-Mobile. I need a lawn. Quick. The fast way to bring it up to speed? Scott's Turf Builder Rapid Grass. It grows two times faster than seed alone for full green grass. Everything else just seems slow. It's lawn season. Let's get to the yard. How good does a shrimp from a chicken place have to be to become the almost number one best-selling shrimp in America? Popeye's kind of good. So give it a try today with our shrimp tackle box for only six bucks. Pacifico is a crisp golden lager. Brewed for those who know, it's what's behind a label that matters. We are back, top of the fourth inning. Look at that mustache. That is sweet. Look at that. I want one of those. I was going to say, you need to work on that uh, for the offseason. Yeah. Come back next year. It would really be bothersome with the wraparound mic, I think. I'd need a mic that came over at the top of my nose and came down, I guess. Well, you only know once you try it. Might have come up with something. One ball and one strike to Oakley Trap, the designated player, Lauren Almeida. Batting in the eighth spot is on deck, and then Madison Duryea. Scoreless game in the fourth, way inside and whacked her. She could see it coming and couldn't do anything about it. So Trap plunked by the pitch. Hit her on the shoulder. Ow. Yeah, she didn't didn't like that one. She's gonna get a pinch runner for her. And you know those those softballs are they're big. I mean, they're, they'll get you. And they'll leave an imprint on you. So you remember it for a little bit. 
pinch runner is Ellie Evans. I think. 66, I think. Might be 88. The pitch is inside. Let's take a peek. Yeah, that's 66. All right. So Ellie Evans. Running for a trap. This is Almeida. Single first time up. Bunts it out in front of the plate. Fielded by Thompson. Quick throw to first base. Sacrifice is successful. Nicely executed by Almeida. 1-3 on the putout. Advancing to second base. And in scoring position is the pinch runner, Ellie Evans. For Madison Duryea. We saw Almeida rip one our first at bat. But good team player laying that one down, even though she's probably feeling good at the plate. It's Evans in the field, into scoring position. Off speed pitch, swung on and missed. Waved at by Duryea. She struck out in the second inning. One and one. Yeah, Almeida. Right, she's swinging a hot bat. Only had one sacrifice all season. Made it happen. It's a team game. One one coming from Thompson. Checked her swing. Sometimes against pitcher like Thompson the strategy is not to rack up a bunch of hits in an inning and get a run sometimes you have to manufacture it get the first runner on get it over to second base now all you need is one hit to potentially bring one home ball three well Madison Duryea Struck out in her first at bat, but she was three for three against Thompson before that. A one hit game and a two hit game in St. George. Count runs full. Chipped foul. Still goose eggs on the scoreboard right now, but Dixie State finding a way to get on base. Four runners, or four batters in the first inning, five batters in the second inning, six batters in the third. Thompson's just been able to scratch her way out of those situations, but now we're gonna see the fourth batter in the top of the order, now with one out here in the fourth. Another free pass. A hit batsman and a walk in the inning surrounding a sacrifice bunt. Now a pinch runner for Duryea. This is 88 this time, so that we have 66 and 88. This is Marissa Rubio. Uh, two freshmen pinch runners. Both have some speed. Rubio, seven for nine, stolen bases. Evans, five for seven. The pitch is hit over the head of Dunkel into left field. Runner had to hold up a little at second base to see if that ball was going to be caught. So only one base advanced by Evans and Rubio. Base is now loaded as Eldridge... Gets her second hit of the game, second time to left field. Second straight inning for Dixie State to have the bases loaded. So Thompson in trouble again. Pitch is grounded slowly to third. Throw to first is in time. I think Torval might have had a play at the plate. 
if she had opted to go that route. Gosh, it would have been tough for her. Maybe if she could have flipped it. A little backhand flip, maybe. I don't know if she yeah, would have had time to look. flip over and throw it. Maybe, yeah. But she was set on getting it to first base. And I mean, just the smallest contact goes to the perfect spot. And dribblers are on the board. 5-3 on the putout. Second out of the inning. It's an RBI for Casey Crawford. Two more in scoring position for Hannah Hubanks. Hubanks one for one, also a walk in the first inning. Evans is home with the first run of the game. Rubio now at third base. Off-speed pitch, a little high, one and one. Thompson just needs to focus on getting one out here. Find a way out of this inning. Don't let this inning get out of hand. Breeze has kicked up a little and is blowing out to right field. Hannah Hubanks has hit the ball out of the park twice this season. Ground ball up the middle for a base hit. One run scores. They're going to hold the other runner at third base as Steph Reed gets it home on a bounce. But it's an RBI single with two gone for Hannah Hubanks. 2 nothing. Dixie State. As Rubio brings it home. So the two pinch runners come home to roost. And the Blazers up by a pair. Here's Clements. Clements bounced into a fielder's choice in the first called out on strikes in the third inning. So Thompson touched up for two in the fourth. And GCU will have to rally from behind. Well, we've seen them win in just about every conceivable fashion. Yes, we have. Now Thompson just needs to focus on keeping this deficit at two and trusting that offense that, whether it's early in the game or late in the game, usually shows up here at home at some point. The wind has really picked up, swing and a miss. Runner going, throw back to second base is in time. The runner went out of the baseline. I think the question here is... Did the run cross the plate before the batter ran out of the baseline? Well, we'll talk about it and be right back. Stay with us. Lucky for me, there's some great golf here in the Carolinas. Whether you golf or not, Geico could help you score some great savings on car insurance. Whoa! Oh, hole in one. Geico. See all the ways you could save. Getting the incredible iPhone 13 without T-Mobile makes as much sense as playing hide-and-seek. Ready or not, here I come! In the desert. Really, guys? T-Mobile has more 5G bars in more places. And now, when you switch, you can get iPhone 13 on us and one year of Apple TV Plus for free. You're not going to fit in that hole. Don't look any further. Unlock the full power of iPhone 13 on us at T-Mobile. At Ace, your backyard is right in our backyard. So when you need to feed your grass, remove the weeds, or wrangle those leaves, go to the best place that delivers on top brands like Ego, Toro, and Steel. No warehouse store can match the convenience of your locally owned neighborhood Ace. So stop on by. You can also order online for curbside pickup or get what you need delivered today. Around the block, what you need in stock with people who know their lawn care. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. How good does a shrimp from a chicken place have to be to become the almost number one best-selling shrimp in America? Popeye is kind of good. So give it a try today with our shrimp tackle box for only six bucks. We 
are back in Phoenix. Tim Wilhelm and Braden Dorman, happy to have you with us. It's the first of two, and the inning ended on an unusual play. Unusual from the standpoint that the umpire, the plate umpire, did not make a definitive call toward the press box, pointing to the plate to indicate that the run had scored before the base runner ran out of the base paths on the first base side. But as Danae Chapman lines it down the right field line, foul, she'll come back one and one. But is the operative word. There is a run on the board, and there's no protesting being done by Shannon Hayes in the third base box. He did come out and talk with Matthew Jacks briefly. Yes. So we'll have to assume that the run was awarded correctly. It's difficult from our vantage point here to see if the runner was out of the base path. That's hit high and deep to center field, and it is gone off the screen. So that one run is retrieved, if you will, on a home run by Danae Chapman. The ropes are on the board. It's three to one. Well, just like that, the offense can come alive. That's why she's in the cleanup spot. Usually love to have some people on base for her, but sends that one into deep right center field. Hopefully gets this offense going with a three to one deficit now. Round tripper for Chapman, again, demonstrating her strength. She's gone that way a number of times this year. Live ball foul off the screen to Kelso. So after a scoreless first three, Dixie State with three in the top half of the fourth inning. Lopes come back and get one. One swing of the bat from Chapman. Three to one. Kelso with a base hit. In fact, it was a double in the second inning. One and one the count to Kinsey, 3.53. Chapman, now tying five field, back up for the team lead. Both have 13 home runs this season. Two balls and a strike. Lopes have been very good in the month of April. Started the season so well. And then you think, well, how can you keep that up? Well, they kept it up. Fouled out of play. Two and two, the count. In the month of April alone, the Lopes are 11 and one. Eight and one here, three and oh on the road. Two-two pitch coming up to Kelso. Hit in the air to right, fading as Clements. She is there. Only had to take it, oh, maybe two or three steps back. One out. Reed fly to left field in the second inning. Yeah, she did, and it was a. Our hit ball just right at the left fielder, Durier. See if she can get her luck up here for the second at bat. Really turned on that one. Oh, one pitch coming. Hit the left. One handed by Duryea. Two out. And just under that one, two balls to left field that maybe you just struck a little bit differently. Could have had a much different result. Still seems like Ree is seeing the ball well. 
two outs. Nobody on for Hannah Burnett. The Lopes DP walked in the second inning. Takes ball one. Outfield more or less straight away. Just a step or two into left center is Casey Crawford. Burnett ahead on the count. Following Burnett is Torville, then Barnes as we approach the bottom third of the batting order for GCU. Grand Canyon with a hit in the first, a hit in the second, and a home run here in the fourth. Three hits in the game. Well, now she's got a hitter's count. See if she can do some damage with two outs. Bring Tourville up. Strike two, the count runs full to Burnett. One hopper right back to Tyler Denhart, and freshman throws her out. One three on the put out. Side retired. Lopes got a leadoff home run from Chapman to get on the board. Still trail three to one through four. Stay with us. We're your neighbors, and we're sports fans, huge fans. So come on over. It's game time. There's plenty of food and everything else we know you love. You choose your favorite games to watch and hear. We're your home for sports, Arizona. So join us today at CAZ Sports Bar at Casino Arizona. This is gonna be tough. I mean, that's a bag full of Whataburger's Buffalo Ranch Chicken Strip Sandwiches with tangy buffalo sauce and creamy buttermilk ranch, melty Monterey Jack cheese, and three crunchy chicken strips? How long will you have to wait before you enjoy yours? Oh, <laughs> about that long. <laughs> Whataburger's Buffalo Ranch Chicken Strip Sandwich is back for a limited time, just like you like it. Collins inbounds the ball to Clifton. Clifton finds Winter under the basket. Kick it up to Kimberly for a long three. Shazam! And you can put this one in the icebox. Sanderson Ford has just won another championship. Congratulations to Sanderson Ford. This all-star team consistently wins by treating customers the right way. No hassles, no pressure, no nonsense, no added markups. While new vehicle inventory is on the rebound, we have hundreds of pre-owned vehicles starting under 12 grand. For a true championship experience, see my friends at Sanderson Ford. It's the top of the fifth inning as this first game of this evening's doubleheader rolls on. The Lopes are trailing by a score of three to one. Clements, Lockhart, and Campbell coming up four, five, and six for Dixie State. Harold Thompson. Put up three zeros in innings one, two, and three, although it was a struggle. And Dixie State right back on the attack here in the fifth after a three-run inning in the fourth. Well, we've seen Thompson sharper. But again, it's her third outing. 
And you see anybody three times in good leaders. Take notes, don't they? They make adjustments. They sure do, and this lineup is full of good hitters. They've had some great approaches at the plate today, whether it's attacking early in the count. Get Sacrifice bunt is successful as Thompson tags out. Lockhart going by. Second time Dixie State has opted to put down a sacrifice bunt. And again, coming from a player who's been great at the plate today with a single and a walk, just a selfless team. It's really got the goal of knocking off the Lopes today. And I mean, we're getting kind of deep into this one. I mean, this is a, a trap game for the Antelopes. We've talked about their record and how they're just the one win away from the title and they only need the one through the next six games. It's easy to overlook a team that you've already swept on the road. Well, now's the time where they're gonna have to really figure things out, find a way to win this game. Rachel Campbell has struck out twice, swinging both times. In position to pick up another run for DSU. Clements in scoring position at second base. Looks over her shoulder at the outfielders to see how they are positioned. That's the mark of a good base runner. Pitch misses two and one. Lopes pitching has been Very good the last two weeks. Six games against New Mexico State and before that, Seattle. Holding the opposition to 21 total hits in those six games. That's less than four per game. Not today. Wind picking up. Blowing harder out to right, off-speed pitch, swing and a miss. You get a ball up in the air right now to the right side, and you're going to get an assist from Mother Nature. There goes Ariel Thompson going to the off-speed again on a 3-1 count. Just really no fear with that off-speed. She's really been locating it a lot better and the fastball today, unfortunately. Another walk for Thompson. She had a walk in the first, another one in the third, a walk and a hit battered in the fourth. And now a walk here in the fifth. That's five free base runners. Now the two freebies she put on in the fifth inning both came home to score. Shannon Hayes going to the circle. Does not appear to be a change forthcoming. Well, it's a 3-1 game. And the Lopes have plenty of offense. Maybe a little action in the bullpen. You see both the senior Ryan Denhart and Kyla Eastburn warming up. Maybe get a Denhart on Denhart matchup here. But I think all the fans and the staff here on hand for GCU would love to see Thompson work her way out of this one herself. Well, Tyler Denhard for the Blazers has pitched pretty well. In fact, she pitched pretty well in Utah against the Lopes. Three earned runs in eight innings, just six hits in that outing. In game one, then in game three, the Lopes took her to the woodshed. Five earned runs in one and a third. Ground ball to the first base side. Chapman takes the out for sure at first base. Thought about going to second. Three unassisted as Trapp is retired. 
for the second out of the inning. However, Campbell moves to second. And Clements moves to third base, two more in scoring position. Almeida becomes a very big out. For Thompson, you don't want to go behind five to one. There's a swing and a miss. Almeida, an accomplished hitter, batting 350, singled to left in the second inning. Put down a sacrifice bunt in the fourth. Oh, and one. Outfield straight away. Breeze continuing to blow gently out to right center. Throw back to third base. A little calling card from Kelso. Just to keep him honest. That play by Dene Chapman to take the out. It's reminiscent of what they've done all season. There have definitely been circumstances where they could have tried to maybe make a great play and get two outs, but they usually make sure they get the one and it, they get out of the inning because of it. Steph Reed gathers it in and stranding two is DSU at the end of four and one half. It's three to one in favor of the Blazers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Getting the incredible iPhone 13 without T-Mobile makes as much sense as playing hide and seek. Ready or not, here I come! In the desert. <sighs> really, guys? T-Mobile has more 5G bars in more places. And now, when you switch, you can get iPhone 13 on us and one year of Apple TV Plus for free. You're not going to fit in that hole. Don't look any further. Unlock the full power of iPhone 13 on us at T-Mobile. At Ace, your backyard is right in our backyard. So when you need to feed your grass, remove the weeds, or wrangle those leaves, go to the best place that delivers on top brands like Ego, Toro, and Steel. No warehouse store can match the convenience of your locally owned neighborhood Ace. So stop on by. You can also order online for curbside pickup or get what you need delivered today. Around the block, what you need in stock with people who know their lawn care. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Baby, it's over. I mean, we both saw this coming. I'm sorry. Bottom of the fifth inning, the Lopes trailing the Blazers from Dixie State by a score of three to one. First up, Savannah Torval. And Macy Barnes, top of the order, Gianna Nicoletti. Great opportunity for the Lopes. Eight and nine hitters here, both capable of getting on base, doing damage. And if one or two of them can, Roll it over to the top of the order. Probably have a good recipe for success. Two balls and no strikes to Torval. 0 for 1 struck out in the second inning. Two and one. Torval's numbers have been lower than she would like all season, but they have been getting better in conference at 262. She's 240 overall. Conference game's a little bit better. 20 points. Three and one ahead on the count. Lined to left, base hit. So Savvy with a base hit to start things in the fifth. That's huge. Base runners are what's going to bring you back in this ball game. 
Savannah with the 3-1 count could have easily watched that one trying to get on with the walk. But she stayed aggressive. Hitters count and ripped it into left. And Emma Villascusa is on to pinch run for Torville. Definitely seen Villascusa pinch run and attempts a couple steals this season, but I don't know if Coach Hayes will be that aggressive at this point. I think he wants to keep as many on the base paths as he can this inning. Strike called to Barnes. She flied to right field in the second inning. Macy batting 267. Barnes has really had a resurgence in conference play. Macy batting 320 in league games, 16 for 50. Including a couple of home runs, six extra base hits. Still a ton of speed as well. Did see her show bunt there, brought it back. I don't think it's a horrible idea to Maybe even try to bump for a base hit. Ground ball to second base. Bobbled, no play. Carly Eldridge came in to field it. Looked like she might have rolled her ankle a little bit. Kind of awkward movement at second. You can see, oh yeah, the left one. The left ankle kind of buckled. That looks like a, a sprain. So she is being attended to. The Lopes, meanwhile, get Via Scusa advancing to second base. Well, she's putting weight on it, and it looks like she's going to stay in, which is very good news for this Trailblazer team. Not only has she played a great second base, but two singles in that leadoff spot. You've still got a whole nother game to go in this doubleheader. You're going you're gonna to want Carly Eldridge. Hopefully she'll stick this one out. But as I mentioned at the top, I mean, this is, this is perfect. Perfect scenario to get these two on to get to the top of the order for Nicoletti. Well... Barnes has been credited with a base hit, and it was going to be a very close play anyway. It was a dribbler to the right side, so probably rightly so. Nicoletti ahead on the count, 1 and 0. Oh. Villascusa at second, Barnes at first, a couple of flyers for the Lopes. Nicoletti looks and sees Lockhart at third base right on top of her. Probably only about, oh, 40 feet from home plate. 1-0 pitch, strike. And I'll meet at a shortstop really close to this third base as well. She's covering third. I would love, I don't know if she has it in her arsenal, but if she could push one past the third baseman, there's nobody at shortstop when she's showing bunt. That whole defense is moving. She can maybe find a hole if she found a way to push it. See if she sticks with the bunt. 1-1 one, one pitch is hit in the air to left field. It is gloved by Marissa Rubio, who has replaced Durye out there. So Nicoletti, they kept her under wraps today. Gianna 0 for 3, a couple of ground outs and a fly ball to left. One gone to Dunkel. Dunkel Fifield Chapman. So if Den Hart is going to get through the inning, she'll have to do it the hard way. Dunkel, 421 hitter, is due. She's 0 for 2. 
Pitch is grounded to shortstop. Might be two, six, four, safe at first. Boy, it looked like Dale Wilson was getting ready to pump her out. And I was going to be slightly confused if he had called her out. It was close. A great turn from Almeida and Eldridge, but it did seem as if Dunkel had gotten in there by just a step. Yep, she beat it. But you never know. Time is called, and Randy Simpkins to the circle to visit with his pitcher. Well, now you have Fifield coming up. A little strategy session. I mean, pick your poison. You could say, well, maybe you pitch around Fifield. She's a left-handed hitter. Yada, yada. Five field with 13 home runs and Chapman with 13 on deck. Yeah, it sure is hard to pitch around five field when you know Chapman's coming up. But I'm also interested to see if Dunkel maybe brings this one into, puts this play into action. Uh, maybe trying to take second base or draw a throw, just as Dixie State did in the fourth inning to get their third run. Drew the throw to second base and scored before the out. But trailing by two, I think you let Fifield do her thing. I agree. That would be the anticipated move in most, uh, most circumstances. Fifield swinging a big stick. Over 400 in conference. 0 oh, and 1 is the count. Runners at the corners. The pitch is swung on, hit to right field. It's a diving catch by Shea Clements. Nicely done. And Tyler Denhart gets out of the jam. The Lopes get the first two runners on in the fifth inning for the top of the order, and they cannot deliver. Not this time. Five in the books. Stay with us. Oh, I've travelled all over, telling folks they could save by bundling home and car insurance. But here's the real secret. Eye contact. We just had a moment. Geico. Whoa. This Little Caesar stuffed crust pizza is really stuffed. Mm. Boy. This is how you stuff a crust. Mm. Is it? Too stuffed. Probably not. Little Caesar's Cheesy Stuff Crazy Bread is, well, crazy. Walk in and walk out with Cheesy Stuff Crazy Bread and Crazy Sauce for only $3.49. Pizza, pizza. Getting the incredible iPhone 13 without T-Mobile makes as much sense as playing hide-and-seek. Ready or not, here I come! In the desert. Really, guys? T-Mobile has more 5G bars in more places. And now, when you switch, you can get iPhone 13 on us. And one year of Apple TV Plus for free. You're not going to fit in that hole. Don't look any further. Unlock the full power of iPhone 13 on us at T-Mobile. Pacifico is brewed for those who follow their own path. That's living life anchors up. Sixth inning coming up. Well, paperwork being done by coaches and umpires. Everybody's all squared away and we'll roll into the top half of the sixth inning in case you're wondering. Got a stat for you. Ball has popped up to center field. Coming in to grab it is Steph Reed. One pitch, one out. Marissa Rubio retired. Top of the order, Eldridge. Through five innings, the Lopes trail. That has happened 12 times. Fly ball to left. 
Nicoletti makes the catch. Two pitches, two out. How many of the Lopes won? Five. Lopes 12. Five of the 12. Which is a little surprising. You think how successful this team has been. They haven't been in a lot of them. 43 games, 12 of them, not quite a quarter of the time. But just five and seven. It's been a very good late game scoring team this year. It's just a matter of scoring enough. One and one. It's a curious statistic because after four innings, if the Lopes are trailing after four, they're five and nine. If they're trailing after five, they're five and seven. If they're trailing after six, they're 0 oh and five. So it's not as bad as it would ultimately seem to be. In fact, it's better. The results are better trailing after five than after four. Hmm. One and two is the count. Braden, look, there's four people out there outside the stadium. I think those are the four, only four humans that we've seen since we got here. Outside of the stadium, that's got to be correct. Yeah, look at that. One, two. Yeah, there's four. It's amazing. The pitch grounded to first base side. Scooped by Barnes. Throw to first in time. Good play by Macy. And the side is retired. Nothing across. Bottom of the sixth. Running out of time. The Lopes need two to tie. Stay with us. Everything you desire. You got what I'm looking for. You got everything that I want. My sugar and gold. Everything you hunger for. Take me to a higher place. Show me all your magic ways. Nothing you ever expected. Welcome to Thosh at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. to a sport of fitness. Premium fitness for as low as $9.99 per month. Simpkins trying to squeeze out a win here. He lost three to this Grand Canyon team at home. He's trying to come in here and win against a team that doesn't lose very often at all, and especially at home. Be a notable achievement in this season that's proven difficult for Dixie State, 16 and 28 coming in. This is Danae Chapman, Kelso next, and then Reed. Chapman took Tyler Denhart the distance in her last at-bat, homering to right center, fly ball foul out of play. It's 0-2 to Danae. Well, other than that, this Trailblazer team is in this ball game because of Tyler Denhart. She's found a way to stifle the top of the order not often, if ever, that we've talked about Dunkel and Nicoletti being held off of the base paths today. And Chapman strikes out for the second time. So it's been feast or famine for today, uh, Chapman this afternoon. Strikeout, homer, strikeout, one out. 
And here's Kelso. Can see one for two. Doubled. Fly to right. Just two hits for the first four batters in this lineup. Could be a potential recipe for disaster. That's an oddity for sure. Now the Lopes are 25 and 9 here. Which is a whopping number of home games. Among the most in the country. In fact, might be the most. I have to look that up. All those early season tournaments. Foul ball. But the series with Dixie State, it's been kind of goofy. Dixie leads the all-time series 25 to 8. Twenty-five to eight. Fouled out of play. But just six and six in the last twelve. After the Lopes swept three earlier this season. About a month ago. Prior to that stretch of 12 games. There's another strikeout. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. Give it up to Denhard for the game she's putting together. She gets Chapman and Kelso back-to-back -back here in the sixth. Two out. Nobody on to Steph Reed. Prior to the last 12 games between these two, which have been split 50-50, Dixie State won 19 and lost two. Ground ball, base hit in the left field. Two out, single. Puts Reed aboard and brings Hannah Burnett as the tying run to the plate. The designated player. Job being aggressive there. As I've said earlier, Stephanie's been swinging it well today. Finally finds a hole. And now she is, now she allows the game tying run to step up to the plate here in Hannah Burnett. Burnett 0 for 1, grounded to the pitcher and also walked. Read away from first off and running. Nope, but she's going to be of no consequence. Well, yes, she is. The inning stays alive. It looked like they were going to get Burnett, but Hannah can fly and beats out. Just a little ground ball to shortstop. Watch this. One bounce, two bounces. Field throw safe. Wow. She really can fly. And there's a couple players on this team, her being included. If you chop it up just the, even that high, she's probably going to make it. Infield single for Burnett brings up Torville. And Savannah just had her first home run just a few games ago. Has home run power. Had 10 as a freshman. It's been a quiet long ball season for her this year. Torval with just the one home run. Last inning led it, it off with a hard hit single. The Lopes would love something similar here. 0 1 pitch. 0 and 2. Two hittable pitches but not where Torval was looking. 0-2. Oh, now you got to put it in play, don't you? The pitch into right center field. It's slicing, and on the run, Clements makes another catch. She's played very well out there, especially tough play with the sunglasses a-glistening. Lopes denied in the sixth. We'll go to the seventh when we come back. Meet Renee, bank manager and mother. But when she gets on her bike, she becomes Rebel Renee. Rebel Renee isn't about greasing some palms to get things done. And she rides with Geico because she'd never rebel against great service. Geico, savings and service for both your sides. 
How good does a shrimp from a chicken place have to be to become the almost number one best-selling shrimp in America? Popeye's kind of good. So give it a try today with our shrimp tackle box for only six bucks. So, people can get a free Samsung Galaxy S22 when they trade in a Galaxy. Any year, any condition. Oh, I get it. So you can take your old phone that you've had for 12 years and loved every minute of and trade it in for something new that suits your life now? That's right, yeah. Then enjoy immediate success, even though you'll never forget your old phone, ever. It's a great trade. Life-changing. Get a free Samsung Galaxy S22 with any Galaxy trade-in. Any year, any condition. Only at at and Check out this Verbo. Oh, no. Look at me. Here I am, right where I belong. It's all I've been looking for and so much more. And now I'm here, now you're here. Nothing can go wrong because I am right where I belong. Top of the seventh inning. The Lopes trailing by two. Foul ball. Oh, and one. Hubanks, Clements, and Lockhart. Three, four, five. Well, the Lopes haven't been in this position very much. When you win 33 out of 43, you're not behind in the seventh inning very often. When the Lopes are trailing after six. This year, they're 0-5. So if they come back in the seventh to win this game, seventh or beyond, it'll be the first such achievement in 2022. Dixie State, three, GCU, one. Strike three, call. Down looking goes Eubanks. And for... Ariel Thornton, it's just been one tough inning that has done her in. She's escaped trouble on a number of occasions. Well, step one of the comeback comes with what looks like maybe a one, two, three inning would, would be huge. It starts off with a strikeout of Hugh Banks, who's hadn't failed to get on base yet today. So we gotta get through four, five, and Clements and Lockard. Thompson has retired six in a row since the walk to Campbell back in the fifth inning. All three Dixie runs were put on the board in the fourth. There's Clements no one for three today. Yeah, say Tim. I mean, there's no question she struggled today, Ariel Thompson, but. Still giving up three runs, the way her day has gone, it, it would usually be enough with this offense. Unfortunately, they just have not been able to get past Tyler Denhart. And things just haven't gone their way, as you see there. Ground ball to shortstop. Dunkel has it roll up her arm. E6. E6 all the way on the ground ball. Yeah, and it happens first, to everybody, right? I mean, if anybody's going to. First error of the game. Charge two. Caitlin Dunkel. Lopes have played well defensively later in the season, too. That's one of those things that we talk about you know, what was good early, what was good late. They have been playing pretty well defensively. In fact, the Lopes did not commit an error in three games in Utah against this team. So that's the first miscue in the books. The runner is going. The throw to second is not in time. Throw was a little bit high, sailed a bit on Kelso. And that allowed Clements to slide in safely. Had a chance. We'll see it here. The throw beat her. But yep. I do think she got her foot in there in time. Barnes did everything she could. Two balls and no strikes to Lockhart. Lined 
foul, two and one. Lockhart, one for one, a single, a walk, and a sacrifice bunt. Talking about that good defense. The Lopes did not make an error against New Mexico State either. Three errors in three games in Seattle. The biggest thing is compounding those errors or battling back and overcoming it. Lopes need to do the latter. Full count to Lockhart. Rachel Campbell is next. Well, the Lopes will have played 37 games at home this season when we're done with the weekend. Currently 25 and nine, 37, an astounding number. But if you think it's a, just a, a one trick pony, like, oh yeah, you pile up all your wins at home. Well, the Lopes are eight and one away from home. It's, it's not bad. The pitch hit the left, fading Nicoletti. It's off the wall. She plays it well, gets it back in. And it holds the runner at third base. Nicoletti froze the runner every way she could by giving the appearance that the ball was playable. And the carom came right back at her. Boom. One bounce and a short one. And so Clements can only go 60 feet. Holding at first base with a long single is Lockhart. There's the classic single off the wall. It was well played by Nicoletti, who threw her glove up at least to freeze the runner just a bit. Bench runner at first base is Shaylee Jensen. So Jensen running for Lockhart. Needless to say, the runner at third base is a big run. Three run lead looks a lot safer than two. And there it is, base hit to right field. RBI single for Rachel Campbell. Brings home Clements, it's four to one Dixie State. Stopping at second base is Jensen. All around team effort today from the Trailblazers. Aggressive early in counts. Making good contact, finding holes. This might be the end of the day or the end of this game for Ariel Thompson. But really top to bottom in this order, they have produced. Batter is scheduled to be Phoebe Schultz. Replacing Oakley Trap as the DP. And we'll see if that holds true after the break. We're going to take a commercial. Stay with us. There's a pitching change for the Lopes. We'll be right back. So, people can get a free Samsung Galaxy S22 when they trade in a Galaxy. Any year, any condition. Oh, I get it. So you can take your old phone that you've had for 12 years and loved every minute of and trade it in for something new that suits your life now? That's right, yeah. Then enjoy immediate success. Even though you'll never forget your old phone, ever. It's a great trade. Get a free Samsung Galaxy S22 with any Galaxy trade-in. Any year, any condition. Only at at and Check out this verbal. Come on. Now I'm here. Now you're here. At Ace, your backyard is right in our backyard. So when you need to feed your grass, remove the weeds, or wrangle those leaves, go to the best place that delivers on top brands like Ego, 
Toro and Steel. No warehouse store can match the convenience of your locally owned neighborhood Ace. So stop on by. You can also order online for curbside pickup or get what you need delivered today. Around the block, what you need in stock with people who know their lawn care. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. walks can be tasked with getting out of this jam keeping it a three run game Let's see if the offense can put something together in the bottom of the seventh Kyla attacks its strike zone that's what they need right now one and one Eastburn pitched two and two thirds innings against Dixie State in St. George last month. Popped up third base side. Caitlin Dunkel makes the catch. Eastburn had an odd pitching line in that appearance. In two and two-thirds innings, she walked three and gave up five hits. Eight base runners in two and two-thirds, but no runs. That was a high wire act for sure. Five hits and three walks. Well, it's that runs box that gets you. So if that's at a goose egg, you're all good. I guess so. It's kind of reminiscent of what's been happening today with Ariel Thompson. A lot of base runners, plenty of walks, a lot of hits. A lot of activity on the bases for Dixie State. Out in order just one time, and that was in the sixth inning. As crazy as it sounds, Lopes are probably lucky that that run total is only at four. Breeze kicking back up. Blowing out to right. Two out. Runners at first and second. Eastburn delivers ball four. Another free pass. Loads the sacks for Marissa Rubio. A run in. Shaley Jensen is at third base. Lauren Almeida is at the plate. Rather, she's at first base, and Rachel Campbell, it is, is at second base. So the sacks full of blazers. 0-1 to Rubio. Fly to center field in the sixth inning. Pretty good pitch. Well, we talk about momentum. This would be a huge win for this program. And especially as we get closer and closer to the WAC tournament. At least gives them the mind that, hey, we can go out there and compete with anybody. Well, you know, everybody has somebody. When you get into these conference tournaments, it gets pretty dicey. It's possible to lose games when you do a lot of things right. It's possible to win games when you do things wrong. But when you get into a tournament situation, it's double elimination. Once you lose one game, all bets are off. It's kind of desperation time for everybody. 2-2 two -two pitch. Foul. Ryan. 
If you're a one seed or a two seed, that's great. But, well, brief timeout here as Shannon Hayes wants to talk it over. A couple more mound visits than Coach Hayes is probably hoping for today, but it's a crucial point in the game. You really want to make sure everybody's on the same page. A ball in play that gets through can make this one insurmountable. But if you can find a way to get this final out, you're in like striking distance. Talking about pitch selection or pitch placement. You get it up here, your shoulder moves it up, think she'll hit it up here. Let's remember, go back to the basics. We talked about this, etc. Coach player dynamics on display. Two and two is the count. The pitch is strike three called. Well, pretty good conversation, I guess. The end result was nice. Side is retired. Dixie State gets one. The Lopes need three to tie. It's 4-1 Blazers over the Lopes. Stay with us. We'll be right back. PTI, I need the P-D-F-C-O-B-A-K-A-E-O-D. What's the E-T-A? A-S-A-P, F-Y-I. See my I-M? T-L-D-R. What? Too long, didn't read. We don't need any more acronyms, but we could all use more ways to save. PMX, YOLO! So, people can get a free Samsung Galaxy S22 when they trade in a Galaxy. Any year, any condition. Oh, I get it. So you can take your old phone that you've had for 12 years and loved every minute of and trade it in for something new that suits your life now? That's right, yeah. Then enjoy immediate success, even though you'll never forget your old phone, ever. It's a great trade. Life-changing. Get a free Samsung Galaxy S22 with any Galaxy trade-in. Any year, any condition. Only the AT&T. More. Want more? Check out this verbo. Oh, no. Look at me. Here I am. Right where I belong. It's all I've been looking for and so much more. And now I'm here. Now you're here. Nothing can go wrong because I am right where I belong. Soccer and tennis represented here in the stands, coming out to support the girls. Pop up shallow center, out goes the shortstop, and the center fielder comes in, and they both let it drop. Almeida looked like she had that thing all the way from her shortstop position, and she peeled off, and Crawford, coming in from center, wasn't even close to that. So the Lopes get a break, maybe. We'll see how big of a play that turns out to be. It was just a routine pop-up off the bat of Macy Barnes. You can see she just bailed. And what an interesting play. Kind of uh, an odd one. A shortstop, that's her ball. So Nicoletti puts it in play. The throw to first base, not in time. Gianna beats it out, but single. And the Lopes on two pitches, an error. Well, it has to go in the books. Barnes ball is actually a base hit because nobody touched the ball. So a, a bloop single followed by a bunt single. And the Lopes are in business now. Now we'll see if... It appears home plate umpire may have overturned this one. Which, yes, you could argue you have the better... Oh, they may have called... Now Nicoletti seems well, to be... Well, she has her bat. She's going to hit again. Which is... Interesting. Did it hit the home plate, potentially? I don't know. Well, Nicoletti is back in the box, so the Lopes are not in business. Well, maybe we'll get an instant replay here in a bit, but I'm guessing the bunt hit home plate, and they just called it foul afterwards. I thought maybe the call had been overturned. 
The pitch is a ball, one and one. Ball definitely didn't go foul. It went right to the pitcher, so it must have initially hit the home plate. One, one. Ball two. Another potential is that she may have been out of the box, and they just called it a strike. Well, so many players are out of the box. It's very hard to manage that. I would agree. 2-1 pitches outside, ball three. Three and one. So Nicoletti working things in her favor. Trying to get aboard. Barnes the gift single. Lopes had a bunt single from Nicoletti taken away, and that's a bouncing ball to shortstop. The throw to first base is in time. They get her. Good play by Almeida at shortstop. Grab and release, and Nicoletti retired. So Gianna, unless this one is extended into extra innings, Gianna will finish 0 for 4. That's a rarity. It sure is. And One out, Barnes at second base, and here's Dunkel. Lopes need one more base runner to bring the tying run to the plate. And again, we mentioned it earlier, Denhart has done a wonderful job at the top of the order. Nicoletti is 0 for 4. Dunkel is 0 for 3. And those are your table setters. So if they're not getting on, it's pretty tough to bring the tying run to the plate in a circumstance such as this. Ground ball is short. Throw to first base is in time. And Dunkel, like Nicoletti, is 0 for 4. Now, wait a minute. They're trying to say she, They're trying to say she missed the bag. Her leg definitely came off. Her foot came off at some point, but I think it was on there. And now Shannon Hayes is going to come and protest that. Throw to first base is. Looks like. Now we have to look at it again in super extra slow mo. Don't know. Hayes pleading his case, but he's going to lose. And heads back to the third base coach's box. Dunkel retired. The right fielder, number 20, it's a tough one to overturn. It is a very tough one to overturn, and it's just, too, the frustration not only of the game, the cumulative effect of everything, but two plays back-to-back -back here in the seventh inning. Nicoletti's hit was taken off the board, and then a play at first. It was a bit of a bobble. There's a ball hit into left field for a base hit. It's going to score a run. It's a run batted in for five field. It's four to two. And that brings Chapman to the plate as the tying run. Dare we even think about it? Well, that was huge. I mean, Fifield does her job. She had to find a way to get on base, allow Chapman to come up to the plate, being the tying run, potentially. And we've seen her home run power all season. We've seen her home run power today. They're going to probably try to work around her because you don't want to see her home run power again right now if you're Dixie State. Well, if you work around her, that means the winning run would be on deck in the person of Kelso. Fly ball foul. Well, they've gotten Chapman on strikes twice. They say they were referring to Tyler Denhart. And the scouting report put together by Randy Simpkins and company 
And Dene behind on the count, 0 oh and 1. This crowd has surely ramped it up here in the seventh. A lot of Dixie State fans here. Travel, oh. travel well today. 0 oh and 1, the count. The pitch, way outside. Both of Chapman's strikeouts have, have been a result of pitches away. The home run she hit was away. It was the opposite field to right center. One one coming up. Way away. Ball two. Well, Chadman's hitting 388, 12 homers, 46 runs batted in. Kelso, 353, seven homers on deck. Lopes would take that, 2-1. Ball three. Well, now if you're DNA Chapman, you are looking for that fastball and you're looking for it up up in the plate, in the middle of the plate, what can you do with it? How much damage can you do to this base, to this softball? If it's out of the plate, let Kelto do it too because she's been just as hot. 3-1 pitch. Foul back. Chapman's gonna protect the plate here. We've seen Denhart go to the elevated fastball with two strikes plenty of times. I would think that she might go there. Well, again. Chapman has struck out twice, and she's homered once. And now we've gone as far as we can go. And let's see how it turns out. Denhart delivers. Ball four. Doesn't chase. Keeps the line moving. Five field to second base. Tyne runs aboard. Pinch runner. That's Viascusa. Put some more speed on the base pass as she is a An tied runner. Angeli Aguilar Bocage is the pinch oh. runner. Uh, so Aguilar Bocage. I don't know. At Is first that base. Five? Looked like number three to me, but we'll see. Five field and Aguilar Bocage on the bases. Well, it's not an automatic to score from first on a gapper, but it would be exciting. Off speed pitch is way high to Kelso. Ball one. Now you look ahead to Steph Reed on deck. Kelso is one for three today, a double in the second inning. Also fly to right. Struck out in the sixth. Tyne runs aboard, hit up the middle, and gathered in by the shortstop Almina, who steps on the bag for the force on Aguilar Bocage to end the ball game. Well, the Lopes made a little bit of noise in the bottom of the seventh inning. They scored a run, they got the tying runs on, but it's not in the cards for GCU in this one. They lose a rare occasion. And today was that circumstance. 33 and 11 now is the record for GCU. 16 and 3 in conference, still comfortably ahead in the WAC West race. One more win will wrap that up, and they'll try to get that in game two. Game. For Dixie State, they get three runs in the fourth inning and one in the seventh. That's enough for GCU, a home run in the fourth, a solo job by Chapman. And a run here in the bottom of the seventh, but not quite enough, 4-2.
is the final. Well, look, we have another one coming up, and we'll take a quick break. Next game is about, well, 35 minutes away. So let's call it, uh, let's try to get on the air at maybe 7.15. You can join us then and keep clicking until we show up with game two. Stay with us throughout the evening. One more to go. Thanks to Kelly Reynolds, our SID. Producer Al Porteous, Director Leo Flores. Reminder, coming right up, back in a half hour or so. Until then, thanks for being with us. Tim Wilhelm for Braden Dorman. Four to two, Dixie State wins at Games airing on ESPN Networks are streaming live and archived on the app. From Phoenix, this has been a presentation.